As an out-of-town investor, one of the most difficult things to get your heads around is the different parts and the different areas of Liverpool. When you're looking to invest here, you want to make sure that you get the right kind of tenants who always pay rent on time and look after your assets. And there's quite clearly parts of our city that are a little bit more complicated than others. And so the question we get asked so much in our emails and DMs is where should I start investing in Liverpool? Now, unfortunately, there's no one size fits all answer to that question. It's very much about your own experiences, the budget that you have, the kind of level of refurb that you're looking to do, the kind of tenant that you'd like to have and what your longer term goals are. Are we interested in capital growth? or reinterested in cash flow or some kind of hybrid between the two. Every single property that you buy will add a different dimension to your portfolio. And so there isn't a simple answer where I can say just go to this postcode. It's very much about getting to know you as an individual and looking at what you may already have sitting in the background, even in other cities that aren't necessarily Liverpool. Now, there's certainly parts of our city that are very complicated, the cheaper end of the market is always going to create a few more problems for you. And there's a very close correlation between the amount of hassle that you're going to get and the yields that you can create with some of these properties. However, I don't veto anywhere in our city. And in terms of postcodes and areas and things like that, I would be happy for you to buy anywhere. But I really want to make sure that you're buying the right property for you at that particular moment in time. So parts of the city like Kirkdale in L5, for example, or maybe Seaforth and Litherland up in the north in L21, they're quite complicated postcodes at times. And on the back of the good yields will come a certain amount of hassle. There's issues within the community at times, there's certain kinds of tenants that might require a little bit more management, and ultimately there's things that happen that are outside of your control in some of those areas. And so while the paper profits might look fantastic and what the agents are promising you might look amazing, that's not always the amount of money that lands in your bank account. And that's what's really crucial to all of this. So should you have a number of properties in the background, if you've got some rental income coming in from other sources, then it's always an idea to start taking a few more risks and maybe to bump up your appetite for risk and do look at some of those postcodes. But if it was your first purchase, I would hate to push you into a pathway whereby you might end up with tenants who are not paying rent and potentially causing damage and issues with your property. So it's really important that we work with clients on a one-to-one -one basis to get to know a little bit more about what they need and how we can support them best. Inside Liverpool has been um, working in the city for a long, long time. We've built up a huge network of people and we only work with people that we trust and we would do business with ourselves. And so what we can provide for you is that safety net. Now, when you're first starting out, you can definitely dip into Rightmove. You can check out, you know, the newest listings. You can start to gauge an idea of the prices for the current market and also go to the lettings channels as well to see what kinds of things they're renting for. But if you're looking for something a little bit safer, then your yields are going to be lower. And if you're ready to take a risk, then your yields will probably be a little bit higher. And it's really all down to how much you're prepared to spend and how much of that you're prepared to take a bit of a punt on. So one of the things that I suggest that you start to do before you start thinking about actually coming to do viewings and investing here is to spend a couple of weeks at least to start to really learn our market. If you go on to Rightmove every single day and spend about 20 minutes looking to see what's newest listed, so everything that's been listed that day, you'll probably get a good 30 or 40 properties each day and you'll start to learn our market. You'll start to understand how much houses cost or properties cost. And then if you go over to the rental side and see what they're renting for, you can start to build up a picture of the kind of yields that you're going to get in certain postcodes and certain areas. The other thing that you'll start to see is you'll see how quickly some of these houses sell and how some of them sit on the market a little bit longer than others. And this is the kind of information that you need to be gathering over a period of time. And it will require 20 minutes of your time every single day. But once you've got that baseline, spending about three or four weeks getting that baseline is going to make a massive difference to the way that you invest. You'll slowly start to learn that the certain postcodes that are really in demand and rent incredibly quickly or sell incredibly quickly. And then there's other postcodes that are a little bit more sticky and things take a little bit longer to fly off the shelves. And so while we're in a heated market, nobody should be placing offers on properties out of fear of missing out in this kind of very impulsive way. It's much better for you to have that baseline to begin with. So go and do some research. Give me a call if you think I can help and we'll discuss a strategy just for you.